Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Plays of Binding of Isaac After Birth Plus. We've been we've been crossing milestones, right? Yeah, 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 I didn't even realize. We had 25 wins in our last one. It was very nice. Yo, Crown of Light. So good. 8 A Y J M K K7. Um There's there's a uh, something to be said about cowardice. We could have chosen with the curse of the uh, blind not to pick up the item that was in the item room. I'm gonna hit you with a very controversial statement. You may disagree. I think if you are streaking in Isaac, if your run is already good, you should not pick up a blind item. There you go. It, it pains me, it goes against everything I believe in for entertainment value. And I really think the most entertaining moment in your average Pardon me, in your average Isaac episode is uh, every item room and boss items and deals with the devil, etc, etc. It's like pulling a little slot machine, right? Um, however, I also, I do believe if you're going for a streak, the right play is not to take it. Now, it did work out nicely for me. Can I tell you something as well? <laughs> it's probably been like that for like a whole episode, right? Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll call that new PC uh, goofing again. I didn't even notice, but yes, my screen region was slightly... You know what we're going to do? We're going to lock that screen region in place. We're going we're gonna to use the very rarely used lock function. I got to tell you, it's hard to be a YouTuber. Being a streamer is nice, because if something's wrong, you figure it out right away. As a YouTuber... Sometimes little stuff like that slips by. And if you're gonna disagree and say like, well, why did you, it's clear you just didn't care, blah, blah, blah. Well you, well, you never made a spelling mistake on like an English paper or something like that. I doubt it. I've seen your comments. Now, it happens. That's why I love the live feedback of the Twitch environment. Don't get me wrong, I love YouTube as well. But there's something, you can't deny how nice it is on Twitch, where when something goes wrong, people go, Hey, Dad, your audio's all fricked up. And I go, Oh, it's because I didn't click this button. On YouTube, you just kind of figure it out. <laughs> it's two weeks later, when you upload the episode. And 99.5% uh, of people are like really good about it and just have a laugh. And if anything, they go, Hey, this broke up the monotony of... Uh, your average uh, Isaac episode, and then 1% of people go, if I made a mistake like this at my job at the science factory, I'd be killed. And I'm like, okay, 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 dude. Sounds like, you know, honestly, you should unionize, but it's not for me to say. All right, at least we learned what that pill did. That was, that was a bit of a disaster. That was not what you do as the, as the master of diagonal walking. We screwed up our diagonal walking there. But I will say, I think it, you know what? We're pulling out the nuclear option. Gamma 135 is not enough. We're going all the way up to 150. It had to be done. It had to be done. I also want to say, this run is very good, but it's one problem away from being very bad. Crown of Light has tricked us, and many of you probably as well, into thinking that our damage is good, but actually our damage stat probably has us at about 2.5 damage. Crown of Light allows us to get that double damage until we get hit. After we, if, like if we get hit early on a boss fight, it's gonna be miserable. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a bad time. I don't wanna be in this room. We could use one bomb to, to turn a profit here. So I will do that. But at, oh, and the luck upgrade was quite nice. But after that, I'm out of here, dude. And really, the, the number one thing I would want to see from the shop is uh, a card. And really, like a five cent card is a super, super good value proposition right now, without a doubt. I mean, I, I have to apologize. I can't imagine how cursed the start of this video was. Burning Basement, Curse of Darkness, Jacked Up Screen Region. That's out of control. That's that's unconscionable. 
This is a YouTube circa 2010. All right, we will take contract from below. Contract from below should allow us to get a lot of money on the shop if we're willing to blow up our donation machine. I'm not unwilling. We got we got a lot of uh, sure we got a lot of room with our donation machine to work with, but uh, this is not I would say as of right now the kind of run where you're like I really want to screw over the donation machine like everything's pretty much going okay. By the way, also I didn't realize what's going on with my face. What's going on with my face? We should have left and then come back in, right? Is that how that works for that? Probably. Okay. Um, there's no card. So I'm just going to be real. I don't even think we buy Pandora's box. It gives us spirit hearts or keys. Both of which are... Or bombs and keys. Both of which are useful for certain, but not compulsory. The spirit hearts would be nice, but I'm not that confident that it is the spirit hearts. So I'd rather save up for our, for our next shop, I think. Anyway. Come on with the curse of darkness. It's getting a little ridiculous, don't you think? So the Bible should allow us to get everything else. Oh, if you drop a card. Oh, you thought about it. I saw it. What does that mean? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Um, we might as, well, might as well roll Book of the Dead for now. Until we have a card. Blank card is worth, you know, less than nothing. Because it takes up a, a useful spot for us. But it is a great run. Don't get me wrong. It's got a, it's got the bones of a great run. And I'm I'm happy to like be in the zone on Isaac cuz like really there was a, a period I think really when I got Here's the way it works. When I constantly have to get new programming going, like, you know, that 10 a.m. slot switching now and then, and then the Golden Goblet stuff, and, you know, the Warzone videos for Golden Goblet, some of them were, like, you know, 40 minutes long, some of them were 15 minutes long, it's hard to plan for. I'm not complaining, I'm just giving you, like, some of the operational, you know, things about doing this business. Um, when, I, when I'm in the zone, the Isaac backlog swells, because I got a backlog for everything. But really, like, it's been kind of a dry-ish period for, for Northern Lion Tries. The videos in Northern Lion Tries have been great, but like five to six times a week, I sit down on my computer and go, what the heck am I going to play for this series? <laughs> when I dive into the bowels of the Steam catalog to find some stuff I have not done yet. Um, and it's just the natural ebb and flow of a series like that that is largely determined, you know, in terms of ease of production by what's actually coming out. Again, I don't control the games that come out, so some weeks I, I benefit disproportionately. I work the same amount and get, like, way more attention because a bunch of games that people are interested in have come out. And some weeks I work the same amount, but it gets a lot less attention because people are like, I ain't never heard of this stuff before. So we're in kind of like a, a, a period with Northern Lion Tries where it, for a while it's been kind of tough to, to build an Isaac backlog because I'm spending more time finding these idiosyncratic games. Now let me tell you straight up, Northern Lion Tries ain't going anywhere. We went through a much worse period around like December, January where nothing at all was coming out except like, dude, I gotta tell you, okay, there's like maybe 70 games on Steam already, and that, if it's an exaggeration, it's very slight. There's like 70 games on Steam already that are called, like, you know, coronavirus. The coronavirus ning, you know? Like, it just is staggering how many of those there are right off the bat. The Magician. I'm not playing that stuff on my channel because I don't believe that those games were made in good faith. <laughs> Which is to say, I don't believe that they were like, hey, we're working on a great game, and then we'll just change the title based on the current event. I believe that cynically, they went, hey, a lot of people are searching for this. Let's make a cheap, uh, like, iOS game that'll fit here. Sorry, that's rude to iOS. I apologize. But he's not wrong, is he? By the way, blank, uh, or not blank, but uh, runebag pretty much indicates that we're, we're done this run already. We, we got the wind sewn up, more or less. Very easy run so far, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a super happy man. He's a super happy man. The kind you do bring home to mama. <laughs> He's a super 
Well, it doesn't. He's a he's a smiley guy. Smiley guy. He's super smiley. Kind of works. So yeah, it's been nice to sit down and record some Isaac. Cause really, like, I've been able to fit in one Isaac here or there, recently. But but getting a big and I know you prefer to have a lower backlog for sure. But again, it's kind of like the operational side of things. You'd also probably prefer if when you went into your favorite coffee shop, they ground the beans in front of you and then made you the coffee right in front of you instead of just going to a carafe and going like, here's your coffee. But if you want your coffee, you know, to be readily available every single day in a timely fashion from when you walk into the store, you know, the carafe is kind of a necessity, right? That's the way I look at it, is that the backlog is, is the reason that in seven years there hasn't been a day without Isaac. Now, I don't think it's the only way, you, here's the thing. There are other, like, I'll just, I'm not gonna, like, subtweet Sinvicta on this one. Sinvicta usually records his Isaac episodes, like, the night before, I think. It's not for me. We, w we would have missed episodes over the years, for sure. I'm a, I, when I get time, I like to bank it, I bank it, I bank it, I bank it. It's, it's just a difference in style. I don't think one way is better than the other. Well, actually, n let me rephrase. I do think, I think his way is better. However, I also think I, it's something I, I could not do. As, with the amount of videos that I put out on YouTube, if I had to record, like, if the six I recorded today are going up tomorrow, all it takes is, like, one day when you got the sniffles and the whole house of cards comes down. We got different recipes. I will admit, he's making his uh, made the order. Okay, that's good. Blank card per throw is solid. He's like a he's like a Krispy Kreme, you know. He, he, when you, you you walk by, if they turn the sign on, you're like, you know what? Maybe I will have a donut to see how he feels about this thing. I'm more like a I'm more like a Starbucks, I think. You're like, uh, yeah, the sandwiches aren't that good, but <laughs> they always got them. <laughs> That's not totally fair. I do like the Cuban sandwich from Starbucks. I haven't had, well, I haven't been to a coffee shop in like four months, I guess, but eh, maybe like three months. But uh, I used to get those Cuban sandwiches now and then. I can't really justify them now because I'm no longer bulking. Before, you know, in 2019, if I was eating a 1,000 calorie sandwich, I was like, this is good because I was, it had a heavy squat this morning. That's not a double entendre, by the way. Um, now I'm like, uh, you know, that's <laughs> more than half of my day's allotment. So, so allegedly, at least. It is weird to think about, like, we, because, like, the frame of reference has moved so much during quarantine, the idea of, like, going to a coffee shop feels bizarrely scandalous right now. Like, I'll level with you. Things are pretty good in BC. I think yesterday in BC we had two new cases. So things are starting to open up with precautions. And honestly, like, I can't speak for everybody. But I think part of the reasons that we're able to open up a little faster than some places is because people here, as much as... As much as Vancouver gets kind of, like, blasted by the rest of Canada for being like, eh... My latte has slightly too much steamed milk in it. You know, like, people are... Yeah, there's a, there's a hipster element here for sure. But I think for the most part, people are also pretty public health conscious, which has been super nice. Um, let's try this. Um, so, like, Kate and I, we have our anniversary on Friday. And, like, some restaurants are opening up. So we're like, maybe we can go out to a restaurant for our anniversary? It's not going to be like, you know, Arizona State University Cantina. You know, it's going to be like half the tables are going to be blocked off and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But I'm like, I don't know, it still feels scandalous. It's like I don't want to tell people that we might go to a restaurant because they're going to judge me. <laughs> All I'm going to say is, you know, different parts of the world are in different places right now. We're wearing our masks outside, but, uh, I mean, if the places are open... We haven't made any plans yet, but we'll see. Here's the deal. We have we have Goathead, so we're going to take this for now. And it's going to stink a little bit. But once it's done stinking, it's going to smell like a rose. 
Like, trust me when I say that, like, we are not science deniers who are like, you know, nobody's gonna tell me what to do. But I am also like, you know, we got like, we got low cases. <laughs> I'm like, if the, there are parts of the world where I would probably not go out to eat right now, uh, and then, but I look at my own place and I'm like, you know, well, in the, for a sense of solidarity, I definitely understand what you're saying. Is like we shouldn't be going out. But on the other hand, I'm like, if the if the borders are closed and we're wearing a mask, I think we're. I don't know. I don't want to say I think we're safe. Here's what I will say: is as always, I default to the wisdom of the public health officials. If the public health officials are like, you can open up with some restrictions, then I trust them. I don't only trust them when they're like, don't go outside or you'll die. I also trust them when they're like, you can go outside a little bit now. I try. I trust them no matter what they're saying. Which is why I'm a sheep. <laughs> All right. Luck ups? No, 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 no. It's a, it's a tricky one. Because I think we like it. With Goathead, I think we definitely like it because we can adjust on the fly, right? Hmm. But I'm going to tell you, if we go to a restaurant this Friday, it's going to feel super weird. I feel like, like the servers... And us will have like a weird kind of energy. Like we'll be, they'll be like, "Oh, you like to live dangerously, huh?" <laughs> Ooh, you guys. Most of the time, I'd be recommending, you know, the basil tagliatelle. Tagliatelle, probably tagliatelle. Um, but you guys, I'm. You need an order of habanero Carolina Reaper poppers over here, stat. You guys clearly like to take your life into your own hands. I'm still trying to get over the fact that, like, like going to a coffee shop is going to feel like committing a federal offense. I have to go in with, like, a pseudonym. <laughs> An order for Northern. Order for Northern. Yeah, 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 I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shh. Keep it down. Keep it down. I'm a known... I'm a public figure. I can't be spotted here. So yeah, it's one of those episodes. I mean, again, until we go outside, there's only two episodes, right? What are the episodes? Baby in quarantine. That's it. We got, and most episodes carry a little bit of both. We got a little baby stuff. We got a little quarantine stuff. I gotta say, I'm not suggesting this is the government's fault, but I am suggesting that they should send us like $500 for having a, a baby when it's not possible to legally have a baby shower. I'm just saying, we don't have a huge circle of, uh, you know, local friends to begin with, but fiscally speaking, and we can handle it, don't get me wrong, but fiscally speaking, being unable to have a baby shower means that all the baby stuff falls on us. I didn't even realize, like, people always say kids are expensive, and you're like, yeah, I know. But also... We'll just pop Arcano here. I didn't realize, like, what you need for babies. And you probably need less. But I really don't like the argument, and I probably used it. But it's like, you know, people are having babies back in 10,000 BC. And th those babies survived. Well, yeah. Like, some of them. <laughs> they did okay without the baby Bjorn bouncer. But, like... So you got the crib. That's a gimme. You got crib pads. Which are just like things you put in the crib that is kind of like a pseudo mattress for the baby, I suppose. I still I gotta do some research on those to see if it's even okay to have those because I read some stuff online. It's like it's fine, and then I read some stuff online. It's like your baby will be crushed by the crib pad, and I'm like that can't be true. You're telling me Johnson and Johnson is selling baby crushing blankets? I don't. But anyway, I gotta look into it myself. Do my own research on that one. Um. And then you got, okay, so here's here's something I didn't know about babies. Did you? And this is, admittedly, if you're going to get mad at this, don't get mad at me or Kate. This came from Kate's sister. Kate's sister ne said, you probably want three strollers. And I said, I thought you only needed one stroller. And then she said, you can get away with one stroller, don't get me wrong. But apparently, you want, like, a good stroller. 
like a like your your everyday stroller and then you also want a stroller that is like easy to get in and out of your car like it converts to your it, your car seat can convert to something that you could put in the stroller and then depending on where you live you may also want a winter stroller that's a little bit more um like insulated which i'll level with you we probably wouldn't need given vancouver's pretty temperate climate but i that's something i didn't think of i kind of thought like a stroller is a stroller is a stroller i also only recently found out that you may need to purchase different stroller or let's not say purchase because you know if you got like family that has them they don't they're not using them anymore um but uh you, you also, as a child gets older, you need a stroller. Like, different strollers for their age groups. We don't have guppy items. Let's go take the deal with the angel. Um, and we probably should have re-rolled it. Actually, this is... With Monstro's Lung, I think we can set up for some, like, stupid big damage here. Um, this is this is an interesting uh, setup here. I kind of like it. But we're not going to fight Mega Satan, so why don't we re-roll that? Now we're talking. What's this thing? Onsus? Almost tempted to like take Ansus instead of Perthro. <laughs> let's let's not. All right, so there's that. That's that's like the stroller stuff, and we got like a white noise generator. Okay, so baby likes the white noise. I understand that. I will say I, I don't resent my own child. Let's let's not phrase it like that. But I was like, why does the baby need a white noise generator? And then Kate was like, well, the baby's used to sleeping with all the white noise in his stomach. And I was like, yeah, but like it's not in the womb anymore when it's out here it's time to get it's time to get on with it you know things are gonna change baby can't live your whole life just just missing the womb blankets obvious onesies obvious so we're getting diapers of course we also got a diaper genie which i actually very much consider an essential service. We have the diaper genie. If you're not familiar, is a uh, let's call it. It's it's a trash can with two compartments. So it has an upper compartment and then a divider and then a lower compartment. How does it work? Um, base, well, what's its purpose? That's a better way to start. It is useful to uh, ha give you a place where you can store diapers without having to store your diapers in like a single trash can that will get incredibly stinky. And you're going to be skeptical that it works, but we already have one of these for cat litter, and it works like a charm. I, I love it. So you scoop the litter into the top compartment. When you're done scooping, you open the seal. It goes into the bottom compartment, and then the top compartment closes again to make sure like all the smell is contained within the bottom. What that means is when you open the thing, to, because sometimes you're going to be scooping that litter for like, you know, five minutes. When you open it, you're not smelling four-day-old diarrhea. Let's just call it what it is. So the diaper genie, I, I, I respect in principle. Um, I didn't know that he's, and the, I also want to say, I feel like the baby industry, we should have full HP for Crown of Light. I'm a fool. Come on, Leech, help me out here. I screwed up. Um, yeah, yeah, get him, get him, get him. Get him, dude. Freak, dude, freak, what are you doing? Freaking get him. He's right there, dude. Get him. Um, so we got like a baby monitor. or these are, We have not gotten them yet, but they're on like the list. But then like when you look at baby monitors, there's like $20 baby monitors, $30 baby monitors. But then there's also like $300 baby monitors that like that are like, we give the baby an EKG. <laughs> we monitor the humidity level. The moisture level in the air, which is just another word for humidity now that I think about it. The temperature in the room. The biorhythms of baby sleep. And I'm like, here's the thing. I don't, I mean, when I grew up, I didn't have, I'm pretty sure we just had the one that was like goo goo gaga. I probably didn't even have video, right? In fact, I'll tell you, definitely didn't have video. <laughs> it was like a wartime radio. Um, but on the other hand... If you really want to end up in a situation where, you know, your baby suffers some kind of consequence and you got to go into the hospital and they're like, what kind of baby monitor did you have? And you're like, oh, we cheaped out and got the $20 one. And they're like, you monsters. If only you had the humidity control and the one that looks at babies' biorhythms, it would be loving life right now, you know? Like, so 
It's just one of those, like, when it comes to, like, my own health, I'm like, yeah, whatever, I'll die one day anyway. You know, I came from the Earth, I'm gonna return to the Earth. Like, if, if I get, like, a, like, juice or something like that, and they're like, you can pay an extra dollar and get, like, the real juice, or for this price, you can just have, like, the crappy juice that's not even juice, it's just, like, we put citric acid powder in water, and I'm like, I'm not fancy, just give me the fake stuff. But then, you know, for a, for your infant, you're kind of like, alright, you know what, Fisher Price Corporation, you got me, congrats, you got me. I will indeed spring for the super baby monitor, that's probably a scam. But at least if something bad happens, the doctors will be like, what went wrong, you even had the baby monitor. <laughs> You didn't have those baby crushing blankets, did you? Oh, baby. Anyway, it's just weird. Like, I feel like any, like... Let me put it this way. Again, as, we, as it becomes clear, this is a, a baby episode. I want to raise my child to be stronger than myself. My parents, and I, I, I really do think that there's like a cycle that generations go through maybe not like generations broadly but i mean like parent to child child to child or, or let's rephrase grandchild to parent parent to child then that child to their child you know what i mean like my parents grew up pretty hard not horrible i think but like you know they they had hardship so when they had me they remembered that they went through hard times and they were like our kids never gonna have to deal with that and as a result I had a really nice and and pleasant childhood that was like relatively stress-free and uh, I grew up to be a, an enormous wimp and a coward <laughs> and I've had to very very slowly and with middling success learn how to grow a backbone over time because you know when I was like 12 if I had a problem I would just be like mom I got a problem and she'll be like say no more I already handled it, right? So I think that, like, I, I now have firm memories of how easy I had it and how that was nice, but in some ways also didn't work to my benefit when it comes to being ready for adult life, you know? So I'm, I'm now, like, I kind of want my child not to have a harder childhood because that's just mean-spirited and weird right like I suffered so you're gonna suffer too actually it's even weirder because I'm like I had it too easy so you gotta pay but it's more like you know give them challenges that they might feel incapable of dealing with but in such a manner that they learn how to deal with it so they become more capable as they get older right but at the same time I think the wrong time to try to flex that muscle is when the kid is a baby. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like when your kid is 10 and they're like, I don't like any vegetable. You're like, well, you're going to eat those vegetables. Spoiler alert. Those vegetables are going into your belly. So how do you want to do this? Before we do this, does anybody want to get out? Dude, I'm, I'm going off. Let's just suck this stuff up. Uh, but when your kid is a baby, you don't want to be like, Yes, yeah, just, I don't know, we just let it sleep in the cardboard box to toughen it up. It, it, I don't think that's how that works. I, I mean, I, I feel like... What I've said, I always have, you have to be careful talking about parenting stuff online. Everyone's got really strong opinions, for sure. And they should. It's like one of the most important issues you could ever deal with in your life, if you choose to deal with it. Um, but, like, I don't think I've said anything controversial. I think everybody gets it, right? Everybody knows that if you raise your kids without ever having to, you know, get some grass stains and some scrapes, they're going to turn out, they're going to have a higher chance to turn out spoiled. It's all about striking that right balance, though, right? And who knows? I mean, I, that's one of those things I'm just, I don't have an answer for. You just gotta feel it out as you go, I guess. Read some of those baby books. Start reading those baby books pretty soon. There's another thing. I don't know what, what men did to ruin this. But anytime I say I'm gonna read those baby books, 
Everybody looks at me like, yeah, I bet. I'm gonna read the baby books. I love to read. I, and moreover, I love to read nonfiction. <laughs> it's my favorite genre. I'm gonna read those baby books. I just, you know, I haven't made it a super priority yet because it's still five months till the baby gets here. None of the baby books, let me spoil it for you, they ain't crime and punishment. You know, they're not war and peace. You don't, you don't need to set aside six months to pour over the baby books. You know, most of them are like 150 pages long. I'm not saying I'm going to leave it till like a week before. That's not the kind of person I am. But, you know, we'll pr probably over the summer we'll start reading the baby books. Because I don't want to have to like, you know, st go over them again and be like, Oh, I forgot the part about like, what do you do when the baby cries? <laughs> People have started giving us advice too. And I do appreciate the advice. But I've realized how much of the advice is kind of... Like, like, the stuff that's practical, we've gotten a lot of good book recommendations that are specific. Hey, if you're worried about your baby not sleeping well through the night, read this. It helped us. That's great advice. One of the worst pieces of advice we've gotten is from Kate's family, which is not advice. It's just weird. Um, where they keep telling her, you're not going to have one kid. Once you have that kid, you're going to need to have more kids. Otherwise, you're never going to have any time. And I'm like, what world are we living in right now? Is this true? The more kids you have, the more time you have? Is that why there's a, is that why there's John and Kate plus eight? They're just jet setting around the I, I I guess I can understand an argument. Cause like there's kind of like elastic and inelastic things about having like with your time when you have a kid, I suppose, right? Like you know, no kids is mostly look, I'm on your side, I still got no kids, okay? Let me just say it, though. There's no world in which having children gives you more free time. Maybe 14 years after you have the child, you can get them to, like, vacuum. But let me be honest with you. I think the way that it's probably going to work is, like, you're going to have to... I wouldn't say yell at them, but you're going to have to ask them to vacuum so many times that you're like, you know what, I'm just going to do this myself because it's more work to have to nag you. It's just breeding resentment. Um, but, I, you know, everybody agrees, I hope, that for the most part, having kids is not going to give you more time. I mean, it's kind of like an asinine statement. I could see a world in which having two kids actually gives you more free time because this, one of the kids, or the kids can play with each other instead of constantly, I don't want to say bugging, but you know what I mean. Instead of constantly requiring, you know, the parental... Uh, attention they could you know go bug their brother or sister and be like let's play instead of like you know bugging mom and dad um, but there's I'm still like I'm I don't know if that's still saving you any time in the in the long term or in the short term for that matter I'm still trying to wrap my head around the idea is like yeah but did you really save time if you went through like a second pregnancy and then, like, all the baby stuff again? Anyway, that's neither here nor there, I suppose, for now. Thanks for watching. Hoping you guys have enjoyed the episode today. If you watched all 33 minutes and 27 seconds, I'm going to assume you did. If you did, click the like button. Single best way that you could help me out as a content creator. Much appreciated if you click that button if you enjoyed the episode. If you didn't, just tell me. Just go, I didn't like this one. Sorry. I'd love to know why, because it was kind of like, this is like an 8 out of 10 episode. We were talking about some good stuff. We had a good stream of consciousness. For now, though... Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. See ya!